I was a man in my village. True stories. His name was Taka. He was top among the occultic. He was so top among the occultic that single handedly he protects the town, the village, from anybody, any thief or something. Kaka was in charge. Then we went to start the church in my village. And the place we found to start the church was next to the house of Kaka. So while we were singing choruses and he was listening, he didn't leave his house, but he was hearing everything. When the preaching was going on, he was listening. By the time the altar call was made, Kaka came forward and gave his life to Jesus. So he came to my father in the Lord. I said, the way you spoke about your God, huh, it must be really powerful. Uh, Papa said, very, very. He said, in that case, now that I've given my life to Jesus Christ, I will need help. Papa said, what kind of help? He said, I have an idol in my house, Shigidi, they call it in Yoruba. The elders know what that means. It's an effigy, yeah, I think that's the correct word. He said that I inherited it from my father. My father inherited it from his father. It's the thing we send out at night when we want to kill somebody. And this Shigidi is so dangerous that when we send it on an errand, we must not sleep until it returns. We must tie down a ram to welcome it when it's returning. As soon as he returns, we slaughter the ram, he drinks the blood, steps on the blood, and then he will return to his position and become just like an ordinary idol. He said, I don't think I can sleep in the same house with that thing anymore. He said, because if, he, if, this, idol, if this thing returns and he knocks at the door three times and we don't open the door, he will come in without opening the door and deal with us. So he said, Papa, I want, I want something to be done about it. Papa said, that's fine. I will send someone to come and take it out of your house. So Papa sent me. <laughs> I go to the church in Elisha. I told the pastor, I've been sent on an errand to go and remove something from the house of Kaka. Will you come along with me? Oh, he said, sure. He didn't know what. And then there was another worker who was uh, supposed to be a strong prayer warrior. And he decided to come along. And we got to Kaka's house. And he opened the door. We were singing a song as we were approaching the door. Uh, we are more than conquerors. Uh, in Jesus' name. When Kaka opened the door and uh, my colleague saw what was waiting. <laughs> oh Lord God Almighty. 
By the time I came to the last verse of the song, I was alone in the room. <laughs> anyway, I won't go to all the other details. But I picked the effigy, brought it out. At that time, I had the Toyota Crown. You know, the old one, big, large boot. I had to break this thing before it can go into the boot. It's that big. And it has all kinds of charms tied around it. Soap as a tira. So while I was picking it up, part of the soap spilled on my body and I got it out. And outside was uh, uh, a little uh, shrine that he said belongs to, especially to Satan. Ah, put that one in the boot also. Took everything to the river and threw it in. Like the blood of the lamb. And I, I came back. When Kaka saw me that I was the one that was sent, he said, Ha! Ah, are you not the son of Baba Adeboye? I said, Yes. You are the one they sent? I said, Yes. He said, Ah! Ah. I told him, don't worry. He said, ah. ah. About three weeks later, I returned to Ifewara. And I branched in his house. He saw me. Eh? You are still alive? That was 1975. I'm still alive today. I want you to lift your hand to the Most High God and say, In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I will never be afraid again. Say it loud and clear. You're going to make another prophecy. Make it with all your heart. And say, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I will not die before my time. Say it as if you mean it. 